Okay, it is 1.30. Lisa, are we ready to go with everything? We are all ready. Perfect, thank you. I note that we need one more counselor in order to have a quorum. And ah, there we do. Heidi West, wonderful. Um, I'm going to call the Administration and Finance Committee to order. It's June 9th, 2021. This is, uh, again, a virtual meeting. Um, you can go to the city website to find the link to join the meeting um, if you want to give public comment. Uh, we also have a voicemail for city council. You can leave a voicemail for us at this phone number, 552-6012. And you can always email city council at, um, the email is council at ci.missoula.mt.us. And um, if you would do a roll call, Lisa, I would appreciate it. Certainly. Stacy Anderson. I think she is gone for this. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, Mirta Bracera. Present. Thank you. John Contos. Looks like John is not here. Heather Harp. Looks like Heather is gone. Jordan Hess. Present. Gwen Jones. Present. Julie Merritt. Present. Jesse Ramos. Looks like Jesse is gone. He's gone this afternoon. Amber Sherrill. Present. Sandra Vasica. Present. Brian Von Losberg. Here. And Heidi West. Here. Looks like we have eight of 12 present. Thank you so much. Um, we have minutes from the June 2nd, 2021 meeting. Um, were there any changes to those minutes? Seeing none, those will stand approved and I will call for public comment. We appear to not have anyone in the uh, waiting room attending. So we have no public comment. So we are going to go forward with our um, agenda, the first thing is the contract for emergency planning services, and I believe Mike Brady is here to present on that. Good afternoon, Mike. Good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, Mike Brady, risk manager for the city of Missoula, and I'm bringing forward the uh, emergency planning contract uh, with Centurion Solutions. This has been a project that we started working on um, right at March of 20, and uh, had to take a little bit of a back seat, but now we've gone through the RFP process, selected a vendor, and are moving forward with our um, uh, planning, citywide planning for all of our emergency uh, plans, uh, development and implementation that uh, we uh, don't have at the present time. So the uh, request of council is to approve the contract for services with Centurion Solutions, LLC, in the amount of $33,752 for emergency evacuation and continuity of business planning. And um, I can speak to that a minute if you don't mind. The uh, proposals were, we had good response on proposals. We had eight total proposals. They. Uh, um, all were good proposals. They varied in um, uh, cost quite quite a bit. We did have four that were within our budget. And out of those four, um, Centurion uh, maintained a consistent um, scoring through our review process of the five panelists on our work group. And we interviewed the final two and selected Centurion to move forward. And I have also invited Angela Yance. Um, Angela is the Public Works Risk and Safety Coordinator, and she will be the lead on this project on behalf of the city. Great, Mike. I just had a clarifying question. When we talk about emergency planning within the scope of this contract that you want to have done, is this for the city of Missoula governmental entity or is it for the community at large? City of Missoula governmental entity, all of its facilities 
And it's also coordination with the existing Office of Emergency Management plans that are county. Thank you. That, that's what I figured. So basically, if some crisis happens, we've got our go-to list. We, we are able to immediately implement the right things. We, we don't have to stop and think. And that's what I'm envisioning. Is that how you'd characterize it? Yes, that's correct. Angela will be coordinating um, site visits with this company of all of our facilities and interviews with staff in um, what looks to be about a seven month process where the initial timeline we were gonna try and start in May, but Angela can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe we're doing a kickoff in July. That's the hope. Great, well, thank you. Um, I had no idea an entire industry existed to provide this type of service, but you learn something every day on city council. Are there any questions from city councilors regarding this? Brian. No question, but I'm happy to make the recommended motion. Thank you. Um, any other questions or comments from council? Seeing none, I'll call for public comment. We have one person in the attending room. To raise your hand if you'd like to give public comment. Not seeing that, we will go forward with a roll call vote. All right, we've been having some technical issues with eScribe today, so let me see if I can get it to work, and if not, we'll do it the old fashioned way. Great. All right. Okay, Mirta Becerra. Yes. Uh, Jordan Hess. Yes. Gwen Jones. Yes. Julie Merritt. Yes. Amber Sherrill. Yes. Sandra Vasica. Yes. Brian Von Losberg. Yes. And Heidi West. Yes. So that's unanimous for everyone here. Thank you. That will go on the consent agenda. And thanks, Mike. Look Thank forward you. to seeing the results in the long run. Um, okay, I'm going to skip ahead to 3.3, Com Missoula Community Access Television Service Contract Renewal. I think that would be a shorter item than our last one, so I'd like to get it out of the way. Um, and we have Jim Nugent, city attorney, I believe, here to speak to this today. And perfect. Hello. Hi there, city council members. I've been asked to cover this for Marty today. And this is the renewal of the ongoing contract we've had for decades for the administration and management of the cable television public access channels that we have through our cable TV franchise. And this is a revised agreement that just has a very few minor updates. I can point out those minor updates on page one. It's a new date, of course, uh, July 1, 2021. Uh, another update is to update the uh, address of where MCAT is now uh, over at the public library. Mm -hmm. So they're changing their location and this is being reflected in the contract as well. Also, with respect to the hours uh, that are in the scope of professional services, that's being increased, or I mean the words up to are being inserted in front of the 1400 bulletin services in part. Uh, Joel Baird, who I believe is also available for comment, indicated that the city hasn't been using anywhere near the 1400 and Lee Griffin also informed me that the city hasn't been utilizing uh, anything towards the 1400 hours uh, that are authorized. So Joel just wanted to modify that slightly for up to, and then there's a modification uh, reflecting uh, in article six that the MCAT folks are in talks with the Missoula County Commissioners. If the Missoula County Commissioners do get a franchise, a cable TV franchise, that could provide uh, 
additional revenues, but also some additional services that they would have to provide. So Joel's inserting the language that MCAT is currently negotiating a contract with Missoula County. And I don't know how close they are to uh, achieving that. Uh, cable TV negotiations uh, on franchises have been held in abeyance while litigation was occurring in the Sixth Circuit between uh, cable companies and local governments concerning how to interpret some FCC rulings that came out a couple of years ago. And I was informed last week by our cable TV consultant that recently the Sixth Circuit ruled in favor of the local governments and that he was glad that we hadn't trust ahead with respect to uh, trying to conclude the cable TV franchise that we're negotiating because uh, Charter Spectrum was demanding stuff that the court said is inappropriate. So I hope that covers everything. Joel, I believe is available if you have any questions or if he has any comments. Great, thanks Jim. And I had noted the paragraph on page four uh, where staff Missoula County ultimately negotiate the contract, it basically opens up our discussion again. Um, Joel, good to see you. Did you have anything else to add that you wanted to add to that? Yeah, sure. I will give an update to Jim's comments. Uh, the Missoula County did sign a franchise with the cable company in May of 2020, 12 months ago. And so in the succeeding year, um, I'd asked them uh, you know, to fund MCAT because it was my idea that they signed a franchise to begin with. And I spent five years trying to get them to do it. And then they did. So they said they would provide us with the following enhancements. They're going to fund three important things. I had seven things I wanted them to do and they're doing three. One is allowing us to hire one and a half persons. And what we're gonna do with that persons is enhance the county uh, transparency and the county uh, communication. So MCAT's going to cover all of the community councils in our 2000 square foot plus county. We're going to provide uh, services at all of the library branches, including Potomac, Frenchtown, Sealy, and Swan. During the pandemic, Swan maximum capacity of their library was two persons. So um, they are looking forward to getting MCAT services like animation and so on and so forth. Um, the other thing they're providing, and this will benefit the city, uh, they're going to close caption all of the uh, government programs, including uh, city government programs will be closed caption on the TV. So if you move out of um, you know, the Zoom or Teams environment and people rely more on the cable TV um, and they have some issues hearing it, um, the county is going to pay uh, $15,000 a year to have all the government meetings closed caption. So I'm really pleased with that result as well. So our added MCAT personnel are going to expand hours here at MCAT. We'll match the hours that the library ultimately will be open. It will be 70 hours a week. We will uh, cover all of the community councils and we're going to provide service uh, MCAT style service, that, that means equipment and training and animation and other kid activities at all of the seven branches of Missoula County Public Libraries. Great, thank you for that. And so Jim, my, my question then is, it sounds like the county did sign a contract in 2020. The way our contract is drafted that you put in front of us, if, if they sign a new contract, it reopens our contract also. Is that correct then? I, as I recall, we can open the contract at any time. Either party uh, can if we deem it necessary to do so. Okay, great. Thanks. And Julie, you had a question. I was going to go ahead and make the recommended motion. If Thank that you. is appropriate. And could I speak to you briefly? Go ahead. I just want to say thanks to Joel. Uh, and MCAT for um, all the, the great work that you do and uh, providing access to people. Um, it's important that folks have access to uh, city and county government and all of the extra 
um, extras that you provide with doing workshops and summer camps and stuff with kids. I think it's, uh, you just bring a lot to the community. So I wanted to say thanks. Thank you, Julie. And I hope your new digs at the library are cool. I haven't seen them yet. You are all invited. You know, the library is now open Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And um, we really do plan as well, you know, to work together in this amazing space. Spectrum is here along with Families First. So we're going to put together fall programs that would occupy uh, kids of various age groups um, for several, several hours at a time where they'll come from Spectrum to MCAP for a while and Families First so that parents can get like a little parenting relief, especially on the weekends for a two or three hour block of time. Hey, thank you, Brian. Thanks, and I echo uh, Julie's comments. Thank you, Joel. Um, it's a great community resource. I, um, my apologies if you've already covered this and I might have uh, not been paying attention enough. In the financial implications uh, section of the referral, it, it describes 70% um, of the revenues from the cable TV franchises, the, the city will pay that to MCAT. And then it has a section about that in subsequent years, it will, should not be less than that fiscal year 21 payment. But then there's this last part about if the cable television franchise fee revenue drops by more than 10%, then it would be 70% of that lower. And the logic of that is not making sense to me. Could you walk me through that? Yeah, so if MCAT's financial condition looks like this, that codicil will attempt to make it look like that. If MCAT's financial condition looks like this, there's no hope for her. That's the second part, right? So essentially this is saying, if MCAT is distressed by a 10% fluctuation in franchise fees, the city would, and essentially this is how it's played out in the last five years since this section was introduced, the city will loan the money to MCAT against, its, against MCAT's future earnings so that we're not uh, restricting people's hours or not buying needed equipment, so on and so forth. Does that kind of make sense? So it's saying, city is saying to MCAT, we're gonna cover you for up to a 10% fluctuation in your revenue. If it's worse than 10%, sorry, buddy, you're on your own. Okay, um, that, I got it. Yep, thank you. Thanks for that clarification. I'm gonna call for public comment on this motion, which is in order. Not seeing any hands raised. So we will do a roll call vote. All right. Keith Anderson. Oh, excuse me, she's not here. Sorry. Mirta Becerra. Yes. Jordan Hess. Yes. Gwen Jones. Yes. Julie Merritt. Yes. Amber Cheryl. Yes. Sandra Vasica. Yes. Brian Von Losberg. Yes. And Heidi West. Yes. So that is unanimous for all in attendance. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Jim. That will go on the consent agenda. Um, and our last item then is Colin Woodrow is here to present on the neighborhood grants that the Office of Neighborhoods is dispersing this year. Hello, Colin. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Gwen, for the introduction. I'm Colin Woodrow with, the, uh, with Missoula Neighborhoods. Uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to hear a little bit about our uh, Neighborhood Improvement Grants program. I'll share my screen real quick and go through a brief slideshow. Great. Um, yeah, thanks so much for taking the time. Also, at the, at the outset, I want to thank uh, Heidi West, who's our forum rep, for her time and energy uh, with this project, and our scoring committee members, including Colleen Beal, Ray Aiden, Alex Rogerio, Randall Gunn, uh, Kelly Elam in our office, uh, Heidi West, and myself. 
And okay. Colin, can you make that bigger? Um, I think you expanded the arrow there. I'm so, uh, expand the present. I, I don't think I can. I'm on a remote desktop. Oh, I all right. apologize. We'll just go with it then. That's okay. Cool. Yeah, I'm sorry. That is as big as, as this uh, as my laptop allows through the remote desktop. Okay. Um, okay. Well, uh, the neighborhood grant improvement grant. Uh, program uh, is uh, an annual, annual, many of you have sat through these or applied for these and been awarded these grants before or sat in the scoring committee in the past. Um, our, our purpose statement is written here below. Uh, every year it's $20,000 and the, this year um, we did award, uh, the goal was to award larger scale projects um, up to $6,000 for each project. The idea is to expand community impact, create larger scale projects that um, still provide a diversity of impact throughout the neighbor, throughout neighborhoods, throughout the city of Missoula. Um, but really, we can fully fund projects uh, to completion. You'll see that a number often uh, projects do need to come in for multiple rounds of funding, given the scale of funding that we're able to provide. Um, so something to, to be aware of. Our, our grant application timeline, uh, in years past, um, the grant application had been open for eight weeks. This year it was open for seven weeks and five days. Um, but it's something that we're going to consider for this next year. We're going, we are going to move this calendar, this timeline up in the calendar year and be open from January 1st through January, February, and March. Um, so we'll give people uh, a full three months to put together applications. We'll also create a pre-application uh, to ensure that there is um, qualified uh, applications and ensure that, ensure that everyone's right uh, on the right track. Um, we did host two application workshops this year. Um, we'd like to, we'll continue that practice as, as best, best practice. Um, and I think that that is, we'll, we'll come back to sort of continuous improvement on the, on the, on the tail end. Um, so today we are looking for approval from uh, ANF to go to uh, council. Um, this is a brief overview of, of what the neighborhood grants cannot fund. Uh, the real intent here is to ensure that we're providing um, civic participation, civic connectivity to one another and to city policies and plans. So residents have a better understanding of the goals and missions of the cities, uh, independent departments, um, and that they're, we're working collectively to move those, these projects forward. All right. This year, we did change the scoring rubric. Um, in years past, um, as someone who's done a lot of grant writing and uh, grant administration, uh, one of one thing that we had seen in the past were there were weighted grant scores. Uh, our intention here was to try and make as much clarity as possible. So the scoring committee met prior to the application rolling out and we discussed what are the intentions and purposes that what, what is it we really wanted to see from projects uh, and, and the awarded projects. Uh, we wanted to create as much clarity as possible. So what you'll see is um, that community impact it represents a, a large portion of this. And we tried to define the differences of, of what that looks like. Um, the kind of the, the, the some, some, some layers, I, I suppose, between community impact. And then you'll also see the same thing with project uh, feasibility. So really wanna know that there's community need, community support, community engagement in, throughout the project. Great. Jim, I'm gonna ask you to mute yourself. Jim Major. Thanks. Uh, there were uh, eight, eight applications were submitted this year, um, each listed out for the total requests. Um, only three applications actually came in for the, to the top uh, funding, a, a possible, possible funding amount. Um, uh, something to note is that over the last two years, there's been uh, just over $60,000 of applications have been unfunded. Um, so we do know uh, that there is a significant interest and need um, for these or and, and a desire to see uh, residents feel empowered to to help the city realize our missions and goals um, and create community and, and, and really build our neighborhoods in, in the vision and values that reflect each neighborhood. Um, and we expect that that'll grow as we build the neighborhood improvement grant project. Uh, we build the, the, the infrastructure and 
create more support for applicants uh, to create the more most diverse and, and uh, wide ranging applications we can get. Projects were recommended for funding. We, the scoring committee did recommend three projects to be fully funded. Uh, it did uh, create a remaining balance for two school projects or projects on, on MCPS property uh, that the scoring com committee unanimously determined should be split 50-50 uh, uh, for that final balance. So those are the final two slots. So that's why you'll see those as having the same uh, award amount. So we'll have five projects that'll come forward uh, for recommendation uh, to be funded. I'll provide just a brief overview of each. Um, the top scoring project is the Bancroft Ponds Outdoor Classroom. This is the third phase of a, and final phase of a multi-stage project um, that has received funding in, in the past from neighborhood grants, uh, worked uh, extensively with uh, Parks and Rec to build this out and we'll hopefully sign um, an agreement with uh, Parks and Recs and, and MCPS in order to ensure that this outdoor class space can be used and rented and, and utilized by, all, by multiple kinds of users throughout the city. Um, so the real goal here is to serve um, a purpose to improve the, the neighborhood as an outdoor space, green space, uh, obviously deal with water runoff, um, and then and make that space something that's functional and useful for uh, residents and students alike. The Franklin to Fort neighborhood uh, came together and put together an application, really strong application that builds and leverages the neighborhood traffic management program uh, that Ben Weiss and the MPO have been building and working on. Uh, this is a real opportunity for us to uh, achieve multiple city goals all in, in one project. And, and uh, it's, a, it's a large scale project um, in the fact that we're gonna be also coordinating with Missoula in Motion uh, for an event in the neighborhood uh, with this crowd for, for a Sunday streets in the neighborhood, um, August 8th, uh, mark your calendars. Uh, but it's a, also a chance to green these greenways. Um, obviously I don't need to present Ben's uh, or, or the NTMP program, um, but it is a really significant uh, program that offers us the, the opportunity to beautify and to, to achieve safer uh, uh, walkways, greenways, safer streets, um, safer transportation for all modalities. Um, and so this is a really exciting project that will enhance those um, and focus on transportation opportunities and safe, safe routes within the neighborhood. Uh, the North Reserve Traffic Signal Boxes was the third project that was uh, recommended for full, uh, full funding. Um, as you're probably well aware, or, um, or certainly Mirta and Jordan are, are well, I think we're all probably well aware of the work that's been done on North Reserve um, and the contract that, that we have with MDOT that does pull boxes when they get re, uh, reinstalled. Um, we do get new stainless boxes and the art goes with it. Um, uh, we, we have learned that some of that, that art does filter down to smaller neighborhoods or smaller communities rather. Um, so fortunately that, that art doesn't just die off uh, when, when these projects happen, um, but this is to replace some, some of these traffic signal boxes that had been uh, originally worked through the arts committee. Uh, the arts committee will also uh, hold this process to ensure that their artists are um, helping these boxes be painted and rewrapped. Uh, finally, we have two projects. One is with uh, the Play Paxson Playground Improvement Project. Uh, this is for the second phase of a multi-phase project. Um, the first phase uh, really focuses on, on traffic flow of students and staff in the space, um, water drainage, which apparently is a, there's a, 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 a grainy photo, but the photo they provided, um, and also safety on the, on the uh, playground. Um, so that's uh, phase one and phase two, it really focuses on ages and abilities. Um, uh, I'm sorry, re rather um, equipment that's available for all ages, all abilities um, that is safe and enjoyable for all students. Um, so that's the, the goal of this would go towards that effort in phase two. 
Uh, and finally, the Rattlesnake Elementary Outdoor Learning Area. This is an area, um, as the photos show, make very clear, uh, just right outside, right behind uh, Rattlesnake Elementary. And the idea here is to create a um, some some an outdoor learning er area um, that also provides um, space for not only staff and students but public access uh, outside of school hours. And that is uh, one of the stipulations that we would, we would fund this with is that there would be a user agreement and ability for it to serve uh, the city as a whole. Uh, and finally, uh, just the process that we're, we're looking forward to, uh, Forum did approve this uh, on the 27th of May. Uh, we're looking for approval of these projects and funding these projects uh, now. Um, and upon that, we will move forward with contracts, um, some grantee packages, uh, meetings with folks, and get them ready, uh, get, get these awardees ready to go and uh, implementation to, to, to have these projects make some real impact in each of these neighborhoods. Um, and finally, I'll just make a note that uh, we, the scoring committee and our office is making a concerted effort to ensure that we're continuously improving this, the grant projects. Um, and so we will do some follow-up to ensure that the application which we try to streamline in a since like a very approachable, accessible, uh, fillable PDF model um, is that we're, that we're incrementally improving, but that we really are trying to make this as, as easy and um, approachable for all Missoulians to see that they can feel empowered, uh, actually be empowered and improve their neighborhoods. Um, and with that, that's the, that's the completion of my presentation. So thank you. Thank you. Um, we are a little bit over time, Ms. Becerra. Can we borrow a few minutes from Public Works? Thank you. And thanks, Colin. That was, I, I really wanted to have the full presentation so that people understand what the, um, what the projects are that are going to be done this year. Heidi, I know that you were the city council that sat on this committee, this scoring committee. Did you want to speak briefly to this year? I think Colin did a great job covering it. Um, I, I just want to say thanks to Colin and Kelly and all of the people that helped review these grant applications. I thought the process went really smoothly and uh, it was really interesting to see what filtered to the top because I think the same ones filtered to the top for everyone, even if we didn't exactly rank them the same. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it was a great process and I think it's only going to get better. So uh, thank you. Great, having sat on it in other years. Um, yeah, I appreciate the improvements that you're working on, Colin. Um, Ms. Cheryl. Yeah, thanks. I was just gonna say kind of the same thing. I, I appreciate, really appreciate this program. I think it's a great opportunity for neighborhoods that kind of have a sense of what they need and want in, in those areas of our city that maybe as a city councilor, we don't necessarily see. I think it's just a great opportunity for um, them to say what would be useful in your na their neighborhood and what's needed. And, um, do we, did Heidi make the motion or do we need a motion? We need a I motion. Will, I will be, would be happy to make that motion. Wonderful, thank you. That motion is in order and I'll call for public comment on the motion. Not seeing any raised hands. Um, so back to council, any further questions or comments from council on this proposal today? Seeing none, we will have a roll call vote. All right. Myrta. Yes. Jordan. Yes. Gwen. Yes. Julie. Yes. Amber. Yes. Sandra. Yes. Brian. Yes. And Heidi. Yes. So that is unanimous for all in attendance. Thank you. We can go on to the consent agenda. And Colin, thank you so much for all of your work and Heidi also on this. And thank you. That's the end of our agenda. So we will stand adjourned. Thank you.